and we're waiting to go live any second now. Hello, everybody. It's Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. Thanks for joining us here on YouTube. Be sure to check out Royal Caribbean Blog for plenty more Royal Caribbean news, information, fun, advice. It's all waiting for you over at Royal Caribbean Blog. Welcome, one and all. Glad to have you all here. Happy Monday. Every Monday, we are live with you, hanging out, talking about the most important thing in the whole wide world, which, of course, is going on at Royal Caribbean Cruise. Thank you for joining us here. We're going to answer as many Royal Caribbean Cruise questions as we can. Starting with the most important question, how many days until your next Royal Caribbean Cruise? Type your countdown in chat. Let us count down together. My next cruise coming up uh, May 20th. I have no idea how many days that is. How many days till May 20th? 35 more days until my next cruise. So I'm just about, if my math is right, uh, about five more weeks to go. So very excited for that one. Uh, this 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 little uh, um, dry spell of cruises, not good for the master, I got to admit. Anyhow, uh, glad to have you all here. We had some super chats before the broadcast began. Jill, 1228. Thank you for the super chat. Five Days of Symphony. Need dinner suggestions for Dania Beach and Aruba. Probably to celebrate. Reliable sources. Boyfriend has a surprise. So not doing the single lady dance anymore. Well, we'll I'm not going to say congratulations yet, but uh, nice job. Um, so for Dania Beach, there are a number of good restaurants in that complex. Um, actually, believe it or not, Tommy Bahama Restaurant. Is, I know it's a clothing store. They have a restaurant location in Dania Beach. Dania Beach, by the way, if you don't know, is a shopping. It's just a little subsection of Fort Lauderdale. But it's a shopping complex really near uh, Port Everglades in Fort Lauderdale. And there's a number of hotels there. Anyhow, uh, Tommy Bahama has a great restaurant there. If you're looking for, I think, some of the better food choices, there are a number of different um, uh, casual fast food type restaurants as well. But... I definitely like um, the Tommy Bahama restaurant. If you want something a little nice to go to. For Aruba, um, the only time I've, I've eaten in Aruba, but always at the resort I'm at. So, like, when we go to Aruba, we usually go to resortforaday.com, find a resort pass for one of the places like the Ryu Palace, hang out there, and then they've got dinner there as well. Because usually when you're in Aruba, you're doing a late night stay, and I suspect you are as well. So, I don't have a, I don't have a specific restaurant recommendation for Aruba. Maybe someone in our chat can recommend one. Nicole Lombardi. Nicole, always good to see you here. Thank you for the super chat. Hello, Matt, from me and my mom. Still waiting for more info on Utopia of the Seas. Yeah, we're getting close, guys. I mean, Utopia of the Seas coming out in July. So we've got, uh, let's see here, we're in April, May, June, July. So about three more months to go. You know, I suspect we're going to get more details and more, you know, like when's that train car opening up and some other details perhaps in the next couple weeks here. But uh, yes, I too... I'm very excited for that as well. Um, I'm, I, I cannot wait for Utopia of the Seas. Chris Casebeer, thank you for the super chat. Do you like thermal spa, specifically the thermal spa and Harmony of the Seas? The thermal spa is always a great idea in theory, um, but I always question whether or not we would get our money's worth out of it. So the thermal spa is a subsection of the spa that you can purchase a pass to and get access to certain venues like the rainforest room and the sauna and the steam room and those thermal chairs, right? You, you pay your pass per person to get for the duration of your cruise. But Chris, just like the drink package, it's up to you to find the time to go there. And I always wonder how many people who buy those passes, how often they actually go to the to the to the spa and essentially spend time there. Now listen, you could maybe you 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 work out every day and then after your post workout you go sit in the sauna and steam rooms. I mean, hey, that, then it'll pay for itself, right? It's more a question of you. I feel like I personally don't get value out of that because I probably wouldn't go that often, but it is a neat area and it's a neat option. So I don't dislike the offerings. I just question if I personally can make it worth my time. Uh, let's see here. Nicholas O'Connor, I was wondering if there would be enough to do for enchantment for five or six days. Price is good, but Tim Lickship did not have much to do. I'm looking at the deck plans in your video. Yeah, I mean, listen. Enchantment of the Seas does not have an overwhelming amount of activities. It doesn't have a a a you know the it doesn't have a real promenade. It doesn't have a flow rider. It doesn't have you know all the whiz bang features that you associate with a brand new cruise ship. That being said, Nicholas, plenty of people have had a really good cruise on Enchantment of the Seas. I think number one, you have to go in with the right expectations. Number two, you have to go in there also looking for a relaxing cruise, a classic cruise experience. 
something we often talk about when we talk about the older, smaller ships. There is really nothing wrong with waking up in the morning, going to the pool, hanging out on the pool deck, enjoying drinks, and enjoying some nice weather. Um, that is absolutely a great way to spend your time there. So um, it's just a different way. If you're looking, if you're saying, Matt, I want a cruise in which I have an overwhelming amount of activities and things to try, Enchantment probably isn't the cruise for you, but you can still have a good time on it without those things. Um, we have some, a lot of Super Chats coming in here. Holy moly, we love that. Uh, first Super Chat coming in is from Nautical Hippo. 546 days till Utopia of the Seas. Love that. Terry Arter. Terry, thank you for the Super Chat. Yo, Matt, hope all is well, brother. 24 days till Grandeur. Someone asked in my Facebook group if Royal Caribbean had coconut water on board and available through the drink, the refreshing package. See you on the Lido soon. You know, on Royal Caribbean, Terry, we don't call it the Lido deck. I'm just saying. <laughs> I've seen a coconut water available. Um, I suspect it's got to be available in the drink package. I just personally, it's one of those things I've not personally ordered. Chat can help me out on this one and help Terry out. Can you order uh, coconut water? I've definitely seen those bottles. Those blue box bottles things. Um, I think they're available on board. I'm pretty sure. Hey, Dennis, thank you for the super chat. If you had equipment, is snorkeling free at Coco Key? Yeah. Um, there's no restrictions. You know, those beaches are available, Dennis. So no one's going to be like, oh, that guy's snorkeling. You owe us 10 bucks. Totally your your call to go in there and use your equipment as you see fit. So, uh, yeah, there's no problem. You bring your own equipment, you're good to go. Uh, lost where I was in the chat here, but I see a lot of our friends here. Uh, Smokey Bandit is here. Welcome. Good to see you. Uh, Warren C. Checking in. Hello, Warren. Hope all is well. Uh, Ron Ladowski is here. The legend. Matt Hintz from MEI Travel. What is going on, Matt? Good to see you in here um Chantel is here one of our moderators and writers for royalcreamblog.com and cruise blog good to see you here the Teresa McChain is here as well uh lots of great countdowns I love these countdowns guys you got seven to 64 six a lot of people will, and a lot of people have way shorter countdowns than I have my 35 days um let's see here uh, it's a great question from Russell. Why doesn't Royal Caribbean allow any guests under 21 to sail alone to the Caribbean? Um, there, I'm sure, are some re reasons, legal reasons, why uh, that's not allowed to be the case. I know you have to be 21 to be in the cabin. Um, is 18 not the reason? This is a question, actually, for our MEI travel friends. Are we sure it's on the... Hey, Donald, join the Royal Caribbean Blog Club. Thank you, my friend. Appreciate you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, but essentially I'm sure there's, I don't know what the legal reason is. I'll be perfectly honest with you, Russell. Um, but, uh, there, there are laws in the place and things like that. Dry spell is relative. Listen, um, I'm going like from March until May with not, with no cruises, dude. Like that is like, I, I'm just walking around my, my house, like, you know, aimlessly like, what do I do? Who am I? Where should I, where should I be? uh carlos escobar carlos thank you for the super chat i appreciate you i don't see a message from you carlos but thank you thank you thank you for uh your support and helcio thank you for the super chat what do you i have brl is that brazil isn't the real anyway it doesn't matter thank you helcio for this for the super chat how do you usually play at the casinos in order to get free cruises? Do you use any system are you going to pursue a signature tier now <laughs> good question so um, what Helsey was talking about is, and we've, we've done a video about this. We wrote articles about this at royalcreamblog.com. And I would recommend if you check out that video that we did talking about how to get to prime status. Prime status is the, is the first tier, or actually it's the second tier within the, uh, crown and Inc., or sorry, with, within the casino Royale customer loyalty program, that if you achieve that status, you will get a free cruise as a result. So how do you usually play at the casinos in order to get free cruises? There are many strategies. I find the best strategy are slot machines. They just, um, it's not even the, about the payouts. It's more about the fact that the tra the point tracking is far more precise on slots than they are table games. So if you want to get points quicker, in my experience, you go to slot machines. Number two, you want to gamble um, enough to be accruing points without being like, you know, crazy. Like I would never gamble, go to a slot machine and do like, you know, five or $10 slot pulls each. Like that's crazy talk, okay? Only Tony Diaz does crazy bets like that. My sweet spot is a penny machine 
where I'm betting somewhere between two and three dollars per spin. You know, like two dollars, two twenty-five, two fifty, something like that. Um, and then, of course, there's also the you know how often they pay out. Um, you want to have a uh, ideally, you find a machine where you hit early or hit big at some point, and then you can play with your winnings. And that's the ideal scenario. If you can be up early and just play with your winnings, um, then it's just a numbers game, Halcyon. Yeah, you're just sitting there and you're just you're just hitting the repeat bet button. Um, and the only reason I would get up, well, if my wife says we need to go somewhere, um, if assuming I don't have an obligation, it would really be because the machine has you know quote unquote um, gotten cold on me. That's more of a gut check, a call on you. But you want a machine that plays with you, that kind of gives you something there. Um, am I going to pursue the signature tier now? No. Um, the, the jump from prime to signature is crazy high. Um, I just don't need to gamble quite that much money. I just want to be able to get my free cruises, my free drinks in the casino, things like that, which is, you know, what's funny, by the way, speaking of this guys, I have, I went on, well, I went on two celebrity cruises, right? One real cruise in which, you know, I paid for it, went on it. Cool. And one two night media cruise. And I probably gambled like, $300 total in the casino versus Royal Caribbean in which I've gambled, you know, a lot hundreds of dollars in order to get to prime. And in celebrity, I've already gotten three different free cruise offers from celebrity and additional money off. Whereas Royal Caribbean, I just get my primes up and that's it, which is crazy. Matt Travis. Thank you for the super chat. Hey Matt, just got back from Mariner Saturday. Could not have had a better time. Thank you so much for your tips. All you do. I kind of October. It can't come soon enough. Nice. That is Awesome, awesome news, Matt. I'm so glad to hear you. An awesome on Mariner. Love me some Mariner of the Seas. And uh, you've got Icon in October. I'm going to be honest with you, Matt. Icon is going to ruin you for every other ship out there. It's it's amazing. And I can't wait to get back on Icon of the Seas for our group cruise coming up in June. So, so excited. Uh, Calum, what do you recommend doing a perfect day? There's a lot of good choices. You know, number one, Oasis Lagoon, South Beach, Chill Island, Harbor Beaches are all great places to go. No additional cost. If you don't have kids, Calum, or Calum, excuse me, uh, if you don't have kids and you can get it for under $50 a person, Hideaway Beach is absolutely worth the money. Wood, thank you for the super chat. 327 days for my first, for my at cruise, first at cruise, I'm not sure. In my honeymoon on Oasis. Nice. I have a CPAP machine. I was wondering, what does Royal Caribbean do for them since you can't bring an extension card? Great question. Wood. Here's what you want to do. You want to Google, uh, after this video, you want to Google Royal Caribbean special needs form. And there's a special needs form you can fill out. And a CPAP machine support is one of the options there. So just Google Royal Caribbean special needs form. You'll find the, the link there. It's usually the first one back. And then enter your information. Select the CPAP machine. And you are good to go. Great question. And once again, Donald, thank you for becoming a Royal Caribbean Blog Club member. I appreciate you very, very much. Thank you. That means a lot. Uh, Ronnie Bickers Jr. with the super chat. Uh, hey, Matt, 12 days till Mariner. I've got lunches at Chops, Jamie's, and Zuma on my cruise. Is there a dress code for lunch or short tees? Okay, short tees are fine. Buy more than shorts and t-shirts on lunch, to lunch on those restaurants. No one has ever said a word to me. So yeah, you're good to go. Jane Doe, thank you for the super chat. Do kids under the three count towards the headcount of eight on the overwater cabanas? <sighs> Technically, yes. Um, it's 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 frustrating because, um, and the reason why it's frustrating is additional people beyond the eight, you have to pay additional costs to bring those people in. And it's silly that like, you know, a two-year-old or a one-year-old would, you that, that's taking up a spot essentially. But um, yeah, they do count that. Um, so I hate to be the bearer of bad news on that one. I'm sorry. Uh, all right, sit, fine. See you in the schooner. There you go. Leave the carnival chit-chat at the door, please. <clears throat> Eric wants to know, if one person buys the Wi-Fi package, is it able to be shared? Yeah. Royal Caribbean does not care if you share internet packages. They only care if you share the drink package. Barbara Hawkins. Barbara, thank you for the super chat. What are your thoughts about possible crown and anchor loyalty changes? I try not to think about it, Barbara. Um, it's like thinking about, like, I don't like to speculate on speculation, if that makes sense. Um, anything can happen. Um, I, I try not to delve too much into it because we just simply don't know. And I'm not going to jump to conclusions <laughs> based on uh, a guess, quite frankly. Um, I know what, where, why you're coming at me with this question because obviously, you know, if there are 
possible loyalty program changes, there's the possibility for that to be a negative change, right? Something being cut, reduced, what have you, everyone will look at it. There's also, there's also the possibility that it could be better and they can improve it. They can add new things there. Um, but in short, my thoughts are, I try not to think about it until something actually concrete is announced. And then I'll make my decision or I'll, make, I'll form an opinion based on that. I feel like Barbara, it just keeps me sane that way or saner that way. Never claiming to be sane. Uh, Christine, thank you for the super chat. Boarding Quantum in two weeks on Monday in Leeds, Vancouver at 3 a.m. the next day. Do you think we can board and then get off the ship again to explore the Wharf area? No posted yet. What? Board Quantum in two weeks on Monday in Leeds, Vancouver at 3 a.m. the next day. I'm not sure. Christine, can you post some more information? I'm not sure I understand what's happening and how the, the, the logistics here of you board on a Monday and it leaves Vancouver at 3 a.m. the next day. Do you mean like your ship is in Vancouver, which is strange because Quantum usually doesn't sail out of there. Like, is that embarkation port or something? Um, but if you're like, if, if your question, Christine, is, hey, we have a port stop in Vancouver and we get there at 9 a.m. and then we don't leave till 3 a.m., then the answer is yes. You can come and go as you please until the ship is ready to go. If that's your question. Otherwise, I'm not understanding you. Uh, Jer Jera, hope I said that right. It's been a while since I've been with you. Continuing success to you. Love the info of the past two years. Thank you, my friend. Appreciate you. Welcome back. Uh, next question. Alex, thank you for the super chat. Uh, I think this is, yes, this is a Alex. I, I recently did a back-to-back -back on Harmony out of Galveston, and it was the first time I never had to get off the ship for even a moment. Customs Integration came on board and checked our passports. Done. Dude, that's the dream when you do a back-to-back. -back. Unfortunately, that's not always the case, but that is the best-case scenario, and that is awesome, Alex that you were able to get that, again, pure luck, but that's fantastic. I love hearing that. Uh, let's see here. Uliana, welcome. Uh, first sailing is Diamond. Woohoo! congratulations. Got Royal up, upgrade for it too. Nice. You are off to a great start right there. Uh, BRO is the Brazilian Real. There you go. Thank you. That's what I figured, but maybe it's like the Bolivian something or else or the Bulgarian something else. Uh, let's see here. NSG Dub. Thank you for the super chat. Can you build up points on the blackjack table? Yes, but not as quickly. The problem is, and this is a larger discussion, somewhere Craig Hart, who's in our chat, is booking another free cruise he got from the casino and yelling at his computer right now. You can get points from the blackjack table, craps, roulette, uh, other games. I can't think of the table games. The problem is, the pit bosses periodically are like, oh, NSG Dub's been playing blackjack for about 20 minutes, so he's probably due this many points. It, there's more of a guesstimation, and it's also more uh, reliant on a human being to input it. as like Meaning, every bet you make is not inputted into their system. Uh, every wager you make is not put into their system. In the same way that in a slot machine... Every wager you make is inputted in. And that's why slot machines are better for uh, getting points. So my recommendation is if you want to get to Prime and earn those benefits, do that on a slot machine. And once you do that, then go back to the blackjack table and just hang out and, and enjoy your free drinks and hopefully win some money at the blackjack table. Trust me, I came, and she dubbed, when I started, when I was turned on to this whole going to the casino for points thing, I only played blackjack. I only played, well, blackjack table games and, and it felt like slots was really a step down but you know you got to do what you got to do right there megan hayes from mei travel is here uh not a dave matthews fan but a very good travel agent glad to have you here megan uh slew dog how does the free internet for diamond or diamond plus work um for three diamond travelers who else on the child can you get all three at once or must you add daily you get all three at once basically slew dog the 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 credit you get is a coupon so if you were to get on board, you can only use it on board the ship. You can't do it pre-cruise. But when you get on board the ship, if you were to go uh, book a cruise, or book a cruise, geez, book the book the internet package, you would see the cost of the internet package and a discount for being Diamond and Diamond Plus. Um, and, and you could apply that towards you know an entire package or just a 24-hour pass up to you. And you can use that whenever you'd like to. So totally your call. Is this Charla M as in Charla? From MEI Travel or a different Charla? Because if it's Charla from MEI Travel, you're amazing. If it's a different Charla, 
I'm sure you're wonderful as well, but good to have you here either way. Uh, good tea, nice house. I love the name. Thank you for the super chat. Uh, I was on the fifth sailing of the icon. While I love the ship, I absolutely hated the pools. What are your thoughts on the pools? Um, I, I think num number one, the pool deck is far less crowded than on other ships. I like that aspect to it. They don't have a giant pool. And I suspect that's probably where your issue is that you prefer like a bigger pool. I kind of liked having smaller pools in the sense that there was more variety to them. Um, because sometimes you want a different vibe. Like if you go to the swim and tonic, you're going to the swim and tonic because you want to go to a swim and bar. If you want a traditional pool, you're going to Royal Bay. If you're going to, you want a quieter pool, you're probably going to Cloud 17 or somewhere else. Um, I appreciate, and the best part is many of the pools have views of the ocean, which is really nice. So I appreciated that they offered, um, you know, a, a different approach to it. Now, per, to be perfectly honest with you guys, if I'm on another ship like Wonder, Freedom, Mariner, I don't really go in the pool much, if at all. I'm not a, they're, they usually get too crowded for my taste. I like more being on the pool deck than actually being in the pool. So perhaps I am not the, uh, the, 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 the best um, uh, judge of what a good pool experience is, but I was impressed, if nothing else, by the fact that uh, there was an, an exceptional amount of seating around. Some of those chairs that were behind, if you behind Swim and Tonic, um, like were never used at all. Nautical Hippo, thank you for the super chat. I've seen people organize slot pool parties on Facebook. $25 per person. The catch is the organizers use their C-Pass cards for points. Yeah, I mean, I've heard about that too. I mean, at the end of the day, listen, that whoever that person is, is taking the time to organize it, put it together, do all those things. Listen, I don't think it really means that much of a difference. Micah, thank you for joining the Roller Derby Blog Club. Appreciate you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I get it. Like, you know, okay, they're getting the points from, you know, all this and you're not. Okay. Um, I don't think it's that big of a deal. It doesn't bother me personally. I, I feel like the, I, the 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 notion of it, the point of it should be, and most of the cases I think is, like, hey, we're going to meet up and have fun together and hopefully win some money and you distribute the money across with everybody if that works out. Um, the fact that this person gets some extra points out of it, cool. They're not going to get prime out of it off of slot pull unless there is like, you know, the entire ship is doing it. Um, so more power to them, but I wouldn't, I personally wouldn't find the time to, uh, to organize that myself. But I, I understand that. Yes, that is great. They do get a little extra points for that. And if you'd like to, maybe you be the person who organizes the slot pool on your cruise and hopefully people show up for it. Hey, Robert, thank you for the super chat. Is there a way to find out how many ships are in port? Yes. It's not exact, but there are websites out there. Cruise mappers, one of them cruise timetables. There's a number, there's like three or four websites that aggregate that data. And I would say between them, they're like 95% correct. They rarely, if ever, get updated if there's an itinerary change at the last minute. Um, and sometimes uh, ships get moved around and they don't get updated. But it gives you a pretty good idea. I, I would say more times than not, they're accurate than, than not. So... Yeah, um, cruise timetables, cruise mapper are two that I know of off the top of my head. Hey, Dina. Dina wants to know, how much cash do you recommend to take into each port? Depends on what you're doing. I would say in general, I usually go into port uh, with about, let's say, $200 cash and a credit card. Usually, that, that'll $200 cash should cover me to, like, get taxis, an emergency taxi out of there. And, of course, a credit card. And I try to use my credit card anywhere I go, Dina, because, um, you know, that way you, you you could run out of cash. You can't run out of credit card, although you could max it out, I suppose. But, um, and again, depends on what you're doing, right? If you're going to go on a shopping spree, I might bring more. If we're just going to the beach, you know, $200 in a credit card seems like a really good way to just, you know, cover incidentals. Definitely, it's more than I probably need. But not, I'm not bringing you know, a $1,000. I think that's excessive to bring on board. Uh, off the ship, rather, I should say. Uh, let's see here. Ron says, when I buy the Wi-Fi package for me and my wife, I buy one package for two devices, cheaper than two one-device packages. Absolutely. James, thank you for the super chat. Uh, do you really have to dress up in white during white night, or can you use it on another formal night? 
You absolutely do not have to. Do not have to dress up for White Knight. I would say a very few people end up actually dressing up for White Knight. Um, their suggestions are not requirements. And again, by the way, all those dress codes you see like White Knight, Formal Knight, that applies to the main dining room only, not around the ship. So you can totally, totally, totally save your white outfit for a different night. No problem there. Uh, let's see here. Donald again with a super chat. Uh, Donald. Right. Oh, there. Is Central is 150 Central Park worth it? <clears throat> me, me, me. Yes. Absolutely. 100%. Book it now. Yeah, it's really good. Uh, let's see here. Jen Green from MEI Travel is here. Hello, Jen. It is good to see you. Um, Craig says, it does feel like a cheat as the casino cops also earn crown and anchor points. Right now, the and this may change, but the free cruises you can get through the casino program, keeping in mind, of course, there are, you're literally gambling and there's, you know, how much money it requires you to gamble in order to get it. But, um, Right now, the Casino Rewards Program is the best deal in cruising. With cruise prices skyrocketing, you know, and you're paying, you know, six to $8,000 for a balcony, the fact that you can get um, free cruises or deeply discounted cruises through the casino for reasonably less, much less money. I mean, obviously, there is a gambling aspect to it, so you should all keep in mind, do not gamble. Gambling is bad. I don't advocate gambling. I'm just simply saying I find the I personally, with my own money that I spend on my own, find the Casino Royale program to be the best deal in cruising right now to get multiple cruises. If you're if you're somebody who gam who goes on one cruise a year, this does not apply to you whatsoever. Okay. But if you're somebody who can go on three, four, five cruises a year, if not more than that, it's pretty lucrative. I'm really impressed by. Those benefits, which of course means, by the way, yeah, cue the uh, cue those benefits changing at some point. Jordana, thank you for the super chat. Going on 106 days after booking 350 days ago. Isn't that is that crazy? Like when you book a cruise over a year ago, and you think to yourself, "Oh my god, I got over a year. This is going to take forever." You know, like I'll never see this cruise, right? And then at some point, you kind of realize, "Wait a minute, that cruise I booked like a long time ago, it's actually here." Anyway, wondering about canceling photo packages once on board. Is it refundable as onboard credit or original payment? It'll be refundable as onboard credit. So, yeah. Anything you book on board the ship, or sorry, um, there anything you cancel would be like, pre purchase would have been would have been back as onboard credit. There is no other Sharla. There is only Zool. Sharla, good to see you. Hope all is well with your family. Uh, hope you are busy uh, booking the O'Briens, plenty of other cruises. Because I know they always love to uh, hit you up for that one. Uh, I just want to super chat to celebrate Charlotte being here. Char I've known Charlotte. Not only is she a great travel agent. I have known Charlotte. Oh, my goodness, Charlotte. I've known you for, for a really long time. I mean, we must have known each other now for, I mean, yeah. Like over a decade? My goodness. We've been good friends. Victoria, thank you for the super chat. Uh, 70 days to Quantum, 192 to Oasis, Transatlantic, 285 to, eight, to Icon, 378 to Utopia, 510 to Spectrum. That 510 countdown seems like an eon because it is an eon from now. But at some point, Victoria, you'll be in our chat and you'll be like, man, I'm going on my cruise in 10 more days. And I'll be like, oh, incredible. I think all your information has made my cruise life so much easier. Nice. Why don't Royal Caribbean ships use their horns more? Because they're an annoyance to the locals. They try not to blow their horns in port. But essentially only use it for the same reason. I hope you only use your car horn if you really, really need it. Jen Green from, from MEI Travel. Thank you for the super chat. The Sharla is here. We love that. We love that. Fantastic. Uh, Micah, thank you again for joining the Royal Caribbean Blog Club. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Donna. Been looking at cruise compasses. Can they be printed? They're hard to read on the computer. Yeah, Donna, send me an email, matt at royalcoreanblog.com with a link to the one you want, and I can set it to be downloadable. They have to, I have to manually do it. So, yeah. Uh, Skyfrag, has anyone been in a loft suite? How was it? Seems the basketball court might keep you up at night. 
Um, I've said it in the loft suite a couple times. That if ideally, if you ask my wife, she would say you you book one that faces the ocean. But even if you fit, have one that faces the basketball court, and we've had that before, um, no, there's not much noise out there at night. Number one and number two, I don't ever think I've ever, ever, ever been woken up by somebody playing basketball. It's sufficiently far enough away that um, and and the in the room sufficiently soundproof that. I don't ever recall that being the case. I mean, maybe if you slept on your balcony, but inside the room, no, you're, you're totally good on that. Uh, next, lots of great questions, guys. I love the variety of questions. Good stuff all around. Uh, Blake Evans, Blake, thank you for the super chat. Is 11.30 a.m. too early for Port Canaveral, Orlando after the cruise? No, that's totally fine, Blake. Get off the cruise ship um, early, but you'll be fine. Um, it is uh, pretty easy getting out getting off the ship in Port Canaveral once the cruise is over. Depressing, yes, but also equally easy. And um, you can get to from Port Canaveral to the Orlando airport in just about half an hour. So, my goodness, if you lollygagged and got off the ship and, you know, at 9 o'clock, you'd still be in Orlando by 9.30 um, and have two hours till your flight. So, yeah, that's you're well, in the, well within the good times. And we have had questions in here and over the course of, of these lives, people will be like, Hey Matt, I'm, I want to do my flight at nine o'clock. You know, and I'm like, I mean, you do you, but that's a mistake. So you're not in that at all. Jess Woodward, Jess, thank you for the super chat. Can I go to Mason jar anytime for drinks, listen to live music, or do I have to eat dinner there to be able to do that? No, you can go there anytime. Um, there's a bar and there's a restaurant, two separate areas. You can absolutely go to the bar without eating at the restaurant. Um, so yeah, no, you're totally good. Jess. In fact, the music is at the bar. So the people in the restaurant can hear the music, but it's actually being piped in via the speakers. So, yeah, you're good to go on that. And by the way, I love the mason jar. Uh, Preston, thank you for the super chat. If I booked a cruise with a friend and they've canceled within, with 29 days to go, losing all their money, do I not get double crown anchor points now that I'm solo? It depends, Preston. Um, the rule officially is however you booked the cruise is how whether determines whether you get that or not. Now, Preston... I went on Icon of the Seas um, for the inaugural sailing. My wife was booked on it, did not show up to the cruise. So I went solo, and I got double points for that. But other cruises, which I've done the exact same thing, last year I did not get double points. It's hit or miss. I don't, there, there is no rhyme or reason to it, um, so I can't promise you one way or another. Because officially, I've been told, even though the rule is very inconsistent, but I've been told that at all, if you book the cruise so low initially, you'll get double points, 100%. But if you change it later on, yeah. Lauren, the legend, Lisco. Thank you for joining the Rolls Green Blog Club, Lauren. Appreciate you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You are amazing, as always, hence your name. Cruising Mother Ducker. Love the name. <laughs> Any good hotel recommendations for LA and Vancouver? Um, for Vancouver, by far, the, uh, uh, the Pan Pacific Hotel. Let me tell you something. There is the Pan Pacific and there is every other hotel out there in Vancouver. In the Pan Pacific, it's the same building the cruise terminal is in. And the morning of your cruise, when you wake up in your hotel room, you just call, you pick up the phone and call Bell Services and they take your luggage from your room and bring it on the ship. It's the best thing ever. Um, so that, that that's an easy one. L.A., it really depends on where you want to be. I mean, you could stay at the LA airport. Like if you're flying in late, you don't get into like, you know, six o'clock or later in the evening. You could simply stay at the LA airport. There's a number of hotels there and then take a Lyft or an Uber over to the port the next day. You can stay in San Pedro. San Pedro is the city that Royal Caribbean sails out of. Um, there are some hotels there. Nothing is extremely interesting or amazing, but you don't have to worry about any, any LA traffic. Usually traffic's not bad going to San Pedro because in the morning, people are trying to get into L.A., not out of L.A., but, you know, it's still L.A. traffic. Um, so um, I don't remember where we stayed when we stayed in San Pedro. I don't know if I can find the email, but I probably deleted it ages ago. Uh, well, no, I found my ride from Pedro, but not my ride to San Pedro. That was not helpful. <laughs> um, hold on. Hold the phone. Okay, I stayed at the ho... No, that was from the airport. I have no idea.
Nope. I got nothing. Uh, maybe someone in our chat can recommend something. I don't remember the name of the one that uh, that we stayed at, so I apologize. Uh, Slew Dog, my chance is closed. Thank you for the super chat. My chance is closed for our summer cruise. They recommend 40 cannons, but pricey. Um, familiar with it? I'm not. Jamie's an alternative. Do we need advanced booking? Yes, you do. I've been to Blue Re Jamie's at Blue Reef. I can recommend Jamie's at Blue Reef, so I would I would go with that one. Um, I'd like to, I mean, if I ever went to Maya Chan and they weren't open, I'd like to check out this 40 Cannons place. Um, but Jamie's at Blue Reef, we have a review of it, Slew Dog, at royalcaribbeanblog.com. So, yeah. Charlotte, 2010, 2011, yeah, something like that. Crazy. Looking forward to cruising you, with you a lot this summer. Finally. Looking forward. That's amazing. Jason, thank you for the super chat. I'm going on Liberty of the Sea soon, June 20th. This is not my first cruise, but it's my first cruise that I personally booked. Thank you so much for all the help and amazing videos. You are very welcome. Hope you have a great time. I'll be on Liberty of the Seas, uh, but I'll be on there before you. I go on there June 1st. Is that right? Yes, that sounds right. Something like that. But yeah, definitely before you. Uh, let's see here. How much do you recommend tipping the porters on embarkation day? One or two dollars a bag. And probably these days, two dollars a bag is probably what I would do. Uh, DFW Hannah, welcome back. Good to see you again. Five days on my first solo cruise. And I haven't backed out yet. Will I get double crown anchor points if it was a casino rail booking? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Somewhere Craig Hart is uh, booking another free cruise through the casino and yelling at his computer. Absolutely, you will. He doesn't yell. He's a very nice man. Is the roller being VIP pass worth the cost? No. Danny, 99, thank you for the super chat. Four days till freedom. Good luck, man. This must be the slowest week of your life. Is Once Upon a Time worth it? Yes, that's one of the shows in the Royal Theater. I think it's cute. It's nice. I think it's worth it and short. And what is your favorite thing about Freedom of the Seas? Thanks for all you do. Uh, the new Playmakers, Giovanni's Italian Kitchen, those two things alone are amazing. I'm going back on Freedom of the Seas in May. And those are two places I'm absolutely going to spend a lot of time in. I love that about Freedom of the Seas. The water slides are great as well. So... Yeah, really, really nice. Dennis, thank you for the super chat. Would you recommend a dolphin excursion for St. Kitts? I have no idea. I've never done any of those things. Um, I never had any interest in swimming with dolphins or anything like that. So, Dennis, I am I, I apologize. I don't have any at any firsthand experience, anything I can really recommend to you. Um, I don't have a very high opinion of the dolphin excursions to begin with. Um, but you know, you do you. I'm not here to tell you what to do. Um, but I don't have any, like, you know, you should do it here or there kind of thing. All I know is, like, the biggest port in the world for it is probably Cozumel. But if you're going to St. Kitts, then you're not going in that direction anyway. Um, but, yeah. Uh, Lucho, how does purchasing before cruising benefit Royal Caribbean if you're paying them less? Essentially, um, I, and I, I know where you're going with this, Lucho. There's a stat out there, um, and I forget what the stat is exactly. But essentially... People that book stuff before the cruise end up being more lucrative for Royal Caribbean. I think what they're basically saying is that by booking things in advance, you are essentially still making them more money because you're still paying for something. Whereas if you wait to get on board the ship, it's more of a, a, a guessing game if it will happen or not. Not to mention the fact that the money is already accounted for. It's 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 up front. But, um, and don't forget, of course, there is whatever, like the cost they charge you, there's a lot of profit built into that, right? And certainly they can make more money on board the ship, but if they do it before the cruise, it just, it's, it's cleaner. So essentially that's how it kind of works. I, it, it, even I don't quite understand it exactly, but yeah. Uh, Lauren, thank you again for being, for joining or rejoining the uh, the club there for seven months, dude. That is amazing. You, you must be like one of the originals. That's fantastic. Is there any way to avoid a repricing if we drop three people from our group of five? No. Also, deliberating between eight night symphony and seven night wonder later this year, which would you choose? Seven night wonder. Unless there's a ginormous uh, uh, price difference or the symphony, you can get like an amazing room on symphony versus wonder, but all things being equal, I would definitely pick wonder. Although the extra night is nice on symphony and I, I love symphony, a great ship, but man, I love the things on wonder a little bit better. But yeah, is there any way to avoid a repricing if you drop three people? No. Um, unfortunately, not. And that's one of the deficiencies of, of Royal Caribbean's system. But you can't. I mean, you could do this, Lauren. You could keep those people on the reservation. And if they want their money back, you could possibly 
it, depending on what the price difference is, it might be cheaper for you to give them. You give them the money, keep them on the reservation. But uh, but yeah, fortunately not. Um, it it it's just the the way of the world with that, unfortunately. So yeah. Uh, let's see here. Next question: Can I make a ten twenty a.m. flight on Disney Park in Seattle? Airline change schedule? No. Um, I would not do that. If you're one of those flights freight freight train fifty six where um that's like the only flight of the day. I'd spend an extra night in Seattle. That's that's too close for comfort, man. Too way too close for comfort on that one. Uh, next question. Uh, Nicholas, what is MEI's website? My computer says it's not a real site. It says their certificate is fire and site is dangerous. Uh, Nicholas, easy thing to do. Just go to um, it's MEI-travel.com. But if you go to royalpremiumblog.com, there's a big banner right at the top. Click on that. You will be good to go. Uh, Kimberly Marshall. Kimberly, thank you for the super chat. Symphony in 45 days. One of the three ports in Nassau and arriving last. Will we have an issue with getting loungers in Margaritaville for a group of six? Have a reservation, but concerned because of the 1230 arrival. Yeah, that's tough. And I don't know because a lot of times when I've done resort for days, sometimes the chair hog issue is really bad. And sometimes it's really not a big deal at all. That being said, I would be I, I would share your concern, Kimberly, because yeah, that that can be a, an issue there. Um, I certainly can't promise you that you're going to get a chair or not, or there won't be a chair hog issue. Um, I'm trying to think of what you could do alternatively, because you know, and I probably that I recommend doing exactly what you're doing: resort for a day. The only good thing for you going for you, is by the time you get there, people start leaving right after lunch. You'd be, you'd be amazed how many people who do these day passes come in the morning, spend the morning, eat lunch, and then they head back to the ship. Um, I'm not saying it's going to be a ghost town, but if your ship is there later and you can hang out a little bit later, you'll probably have the place to yourself sooner or later. Um, but it's, it's hard. It, this is a tough one to do. And you with the resort for a day stuff, the resort passes, you can't wait, you can't like go in without one and then book it on the spot. I mean, maybe you could, but I, I don't know if they take same day reservations. That would be oh why I'm out of focus here. That would be one thing I'd be concerned about. Um hello, camera. I'm the only thing in the I don't even know what's in focus currently. My chair. Bizarre. Anyhow, um, the, here's what I would do, Kimberly, if I were you. You could consider calling the resort. like yeah, Call them now. Like, maybe not today, but call them tomorrow. And um, and ask if they can sell day passes on day of. That's one option. That way, at least you can scope it out before you commit to it. Uh, Matt Boswell. Matt, thank you for the super chat. 132 days till Harmony. Thanks, Valerie at MEI Travel. Nice. Uh, Shoshana, good to see you again. Welcome. Thank you for the super chat. Does Paradise Beach have Wi-Fi? Yes, absolutely. What's your favorite beach at Roatan? Um, Mayan Princess. It's available through Royal Caribbean, so you don't book this on one on your own. But it's called Mayan Princess. It's semi-all-inclusive, and I like that quite a bit when I went there. So, um, that's a resort pass. I don't have, like, a beach beach, like, hey, Matt, I want to go to, like, you know, a, a secluded beach somewhere, like a park. I don't have one of those, but... Uh, Mayan Princess is what I would recommend. But Paradise Beach does have Wi-Fi. They are absolutely fantastic. I remember, and it's funny, Shoshana, I went to, when I went, last time I went to Mr. Sancho's and I swore it off and never go back again. One of the many problems I had was their Wi-Fi never worked at Mr. Sancho's. Paradise Beach works like a charm. No problems at all. Uh, let's see here. Do, 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 do. Hey, Sunny Girl, Navigator. Hi, Navigator of the Seas from LA. Roller Caribbean phone rep says we have to bring original medication pill box bottles for all prescription supplements, vitamins. I would need an entire suitcase for my meds. I can tell you from experience, they absolutely, you don't. Um, I don't know why the rep said that, but I can just tell you from experience, you would far not be the first person to do that. And I don't think anyone would care, quite frankly. Um, Maybe if you're bring, I mean, you're not allowed to bring medical marijuana anyway, so that doesn't matter. But no, your 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 you know your your cholesterol pills and back pain pills, nobody cares. It's fine. 
um, just put in your luggage. And I've certainly never had that question of me. Uh, Susan, if you're prime, can you get a soft drink at the casino instead of alcohol? Of course, yes. Um, anything they have behind the bar, they give to you. And of course, they have uh, soft drinks and bottled water as well. There's no coffee behind the bar, though. That's one thing to keep in mind. Uh, Cisa, if I thank you for the super chat, I don't see a message from you. I found it. Can a four year old do the abyss slide? There is no age limit, there are height requirements for the abyss. So, I believe for the abyss, I'll look it up for you. Um, the abyss height, uh, 44 inches, 44 inches. So if you got a 44-inch tall four-year-old, absolutely, yes. Uh, we also have a super chat from Soggy Couch. What a great name. Thank you for the super chat. Book Margaritaville, NASA. Have you been there? I have not, but but wait, wait, wait. We do have one of our staff members went there. Um, Marcy went there. We have a review, Soggy Couch, at royalcaribbeanblog.com. Chantel, if you're in the chat, can you link to Soggy Couch the review that Marcy did of Margaritaville? Um. Her general consensus, as I recall, was she liked it. She thought the food and drink were way overpriced, um, but it was a fun place. Which is, by the way, the food and drink being overpriced at a resort day pass is pretty common. Uh, Jason Jung, thank you for the super chat. Hi from Vancouver. Pan Pacific is a great hotel. Three, thank you very much. Three hundred nine ways to Oasis. Should I reprice even for a $70 difference? So I have to pay a $100 change fee every time. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, no. If you're not changing the ship or the sale date, which you're not, you're just repricing. Yeah. You, you do not incur the change fee. And uh, is it worth repricing 70 bucks? Heck yeah, it is. Absolutely. It is. Especially if you have a travel agent doing it. But yes, absolutely. Uh, Donald, again, thank you for the super chat. Canteens go into the bars on a roller coaster ship. Yeah, unless it's an adult only venue. Sometimes, like, they'll have, like, adult comedy or um, other things like that. But otherwise, yeah, absolutely. No problem at all. JP, thank you for the super chat. 131 days till Liberty of the Seas. In the past, I've done Chops Plus One, but don't see it now. Outside of the ultimate dining, have dining packages gone the way of Boom and Soda? No, they still offer some of the less than ultimate dining packages, but it really depends on the sailing. I think Royal Caribbean kind of kind of uses an algorithm to guesstimate how much demand there will be and offer packages that match that. Um, but they still exist. Just maybe not on your selling, unfortunately. Uh, Nikki, when do you know your room on guarantee? Some point between now and when you actually get on the ship. My cruise I have on May 20th on Freedom of the Seas. I still don't have my room booked. I'm sorry, I have my room booked. I have a guarantee and I don't have my room assignment yet. Um, and I booked that like two or three weeks ago now. Um, so... There's no telling. It could happen at any time, my friend. Uh, do you need to bring a birth certificate for a med cruise? Rick, that doesn't work in the med. If you're taking a Mediterranean cruise, you need a passport. That 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 birth certificate thing only works for cruises out of the U.S. So since your med cruise will be in Europe, you you need a passport or you cannot cruise. Sorry to tell you. I hope that's not a, a shock to you. Let me grab a drink of water here. Skyfrog, thank you for the super chat. Best restaurant for lunch and embarkation on Allure of the Seas. I have the unlimited dining package. Giovanni's. I like Giovanni's a lot. I would say Giovanni's. YOLO book it. Can you take food to go and eat anywhere you want? Absolutely, yes. The only place you can't eat is in the pool, but yeah. You want to bring it to your room, bring it to your balcony, a random chair somewhere on the promenade? Absolutely. Uh, yeah, Spooky Bandit, as someone who travels with, with someone who has an entire cache of prescription meds, We've never had an issue. There you go. I, I, yeah, I've never, like, in the pantheon of news stories covered in cruising, I've never seen that being an issue. Uh, what is a good hotel to stay at by the port terminal in Fort Lauderdale? The Fort Lauderdale Marriott, Air, sorry, the Marriott Fort Lauderdale Airport Hotel. We have a review of it at royalcaribbeanblog.com. Uh, the Marriott Fort Lauderdale Airport. It's my favorite hotel in all of South Florida. It's great. I love that quite a bit. Uh, and thank you, Chantel, for linking the Margaritaville Resort review. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, and there is also, and there it is one more time. Even better. Fantastic. Uh, is going on ovation in 70 days. Is fish and ships complimentary? Uh, some of it is, some of it is not. It's kind of weird. 
There is some that are, some that are not. Matt M, any updates on Labadee? And if and when Royal Caribbean will resume stops there? I literally posted an article about this today at RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. Uh, right now, they're canceled through the end of May. No word on if they'll resume stops beginning in June or some point thereafter. So TBD. What is the best way to get from Southampton from London? The train. Uh, take the train. I did it. It's super easy. Recommended 100%. It's very close by. Just book the train. Super simple. Uh, let's see here. Next question. Oops. Clicking the wrong thing there. That could have gotten really, really bad. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. Donna is doing a back-to-back -back out of Vancouver to Alaska. My first back-to-back. -back. How does this change? How does it work to change cabins? So basically, um, you need to talk on, on cruise number one, talk to your stateroom attendant. Uh, here's what I would do, Donna. If you if it were me, this is what I would do. Um, on like, you know, night four, five, probably night five, I would talk to your stateroom attendant and I would say, hello, stateroom attendant. This, you've done, you provided such great service. I really appreciate you. In fact, I wanted to give you your tip right now and I would give them some cash. And then I would say, and they would say, thank you. And I'd say, I appreciate you. By the way, I'm staying on board for the next sailing, but I'm moving cabins. Can you help me with this? And then they will instruct you to either do one of two things, Donna. Either they, either they will say, leave everything where it is, uh, pack up all your stuff, but leave all your stuff on the hangers, and I'll move it for you. Or they'll say, put everything, take it, pack up everything, put it on your bed, on the bed, and they'll move it for you. Either way, they'll help you out on that. Absolutely. Uh, let's see here. Do, 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 do. Um, when is the third icon class cruise going to be unveiled? I don't know. Good question. Not sure on that one. Um, it, when it comes to reveals about new ships, new things, whatever, it's really a guessing game because Royal Caribbean just kind of you know springs it on you when there's something to, to announce. Uh, hey, Matt, going on Wonder, would you recommend a border balcony or ocean view? I mean, it's hard to go wrong with an ocean view balcony. Or do you mean like an ocean view, like a porthole? If it's a porthole versus a boardwalk balcony, I take the boardwalk balcony every day of the week. There's more space. There's fresh air. You have the balcony space. If your question is boardwalk balcony or ocean balcony, you can make an argument for both. Um, ocean view balcony is hard to go wrong with. Boardwalk balconies have a little more noise, but there's a great uh, people watching aspect to it. So it's not terrible from that perspective. Ooh, Jeff Burns, there it is. Double Tree, San Pedro. Is that where we stayed? This is where I stayed in San Pedro. Thank you, Jeff, for uh, remembering on that one. Uh, is We always cruise in January, February. Is there another good month to go to the Caribbean out of Florida? Um, December, November, December, January, February. Really, any month between, you know, December and May. Um, really, between December and March, the humidity is far more bearable than the rest of the year. Um, but I guess it depends on your definition of good month because, hey, September is really cheap to go on a cruise to the Caribbean. Of course, it's hurricane season, but, um, you know, not the end of the world. I cruise every year uh, in September, and this year included, I'll be on uh, another celebrity cruise, one of the free casino cruises I got from Celebrity. Thank you, Craig Hart. Um, we'll be doing that. Uh, I've heard some people pool their money and play slots. Is this a good idea? It's not a good idea if both people want to get um, to you know get get status within the customer loyalty program that the casino has, but it can be a way to have bigger bets, Carlette. Because I suspect the reason why they're doing this is that by having more money, you can make higher bets. And the theoretically, the higher your bet, the higher your payout. If you were to actually win, right? Uh, it's not always the case. People, plenty of people win giant bonuses on like you know really small bets, but I think that's really the, um, I think that's really the the the, the idea there, the, the theory anyway. Um, do, 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 do. Good question. So far, we're running out of time. Only five more minutes. Get your questions in now, otherwise. 
It's all over. Do, 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 do. Um, what is my next cruise? My next cruise is coming up in uh, May 20th. Uh, Rita, I love small ships and I cannot lie. Matt, there was a little spruce up. Was there a little spruce up done to Grandeur recently? Diamond level, the first time on the ship coming up in May. All ships are are kept up to something. You know, there's maintenance work being done. But, I mean, it's still going to be an old ship, Rita. It's going to feel like an old ship. But that doesn't mean it's falling apart or, or dilapidated. It's just simply going to be a smaller, older ship, quite frankly. Have you ever done an East Coast cruise up to Canada? Yes, we did one uh, this past fall with Mr. Jeff Burns. And it was great. Had a wonderful time. It was actually one of my favorite cruises I've ever taken. That was really, really nice. Uh, it's Jose. Hey, Matt, our cruise is in a few days. We haven't heard anything about Royal Up. Did we miss out? No, but I wouldn't be surprised if you didn't get it. it they take up to about, you know, like a couple of days before you're sailing to let you know. Sometimes it might, they might not even let you know until you get on board the ship, quite frankly. Is Utopia of the Seas going to be the last of the Oasis class? No, there's a seventh one already ordered. Any word on the Discovery class? Nope, nothing else. Nothing, just maybe we'll get an update later on this year, but nothing else new to report. When do the transatlantic cruises come out there? They don't, Royal Caribbean doesn't release transatlantic cruises like, hey, here's all the transatlantics. What they do, Jamie, is they'll release uh, the European cruises and the North American cruises. And you can find in there one half of the transatlantics because it's part of that. So hope that makes sense. Um, Becky also represents the San Pedro Doubletree. It has shuttle service to the cruise port. Parking is a charge, but you can leave your car at the hotel if you stay overnight. There you go. Nice. Um, is there a way to find out which cruisers, which cruises have back-to-back -back cruises? Every cruise can be a back-to-back -back DG. There is not, you don't book a back-to-back, -back, you just book two cruises in a row. That's what makes a back-to-back. -back. Uh, what is your best Royal Caribbean cruise ship in the entire fleet? Well, that's, what do you mean by best? Cheapest, most things to do, best shows on board, best dining? I recommend, I love Icon of the Seas. I think it's a really, really good uh, ship, and I like that quite a bit. Judgment Jimmy, what a great name. I got 31 days till Symphony out of Bayonne. Can I reserve specialty dining times before my crew starts with the limited dining package I bought? No, not yet. Um, allegedly, that feature is coming. I mean, Royal Caribbean has said that feature is coming this year. It was supposed to be out already, but they're still working on it. But um, now you're going to cruise in 31 days. Probably not in time for that. But maybe your next cruise will have that. So there you go. Chantel, thanks for the uh, linking the hotel reservation, the hotel reservation, the hotel review that I talked about earlier in Fort Lauderdale. Fantastic. And our last, ooh, JC is, is on Anthem right now, heading to a show. Nice. Um, Hideki, will Royal Caribbean make smaller ships? They have said they are working on potentially on a project for that. We have no other details. And the last question is from, hold on a second. I clicked on the wrong one. Oh, hang on a second. We've got a super chat coming in from Ed. Ed, thanks for the super chat, buddy. Do my very first back-to-back -back on Utopia in the same stateroom. Do we have to leave the ship? And if so, do we get back on before the next set of cruisers? Yes and yes. Uh, typically what happens, and we talked about this actually earlier in this broadcast, where somebody who did this didn't have to leave the ship. But essentially what's going to happen, Ed, after cruise number one, you'll report to a venue, with, and you'll meet all the other back-to-backers. Then there'll be a Royal Caribbean crew member there. Um, they'll wait for everybody else to get off the ship. Then they'll escort you off the ship and then back on board. Sometimes the back on board is right away. Sometimes there's a little bit of weight involved. It really depends on the um, on, on, on the customs folks on how generous I think they'll be there. So hope that makes sense. Uh, Sarah, this is our last question. Thanks for the videos. You've been very helpful over the years. Score to Sky Junior on Icon. Wondering if the room service is free for a sweet guest. Yes, it is. When you're in a uh, sky class or above, room service charge is included. So, yeah, there you go. Cool, cool, cool. Well, thank you all so much for joining us here. We have run out of time, but I appreciate each and every one of you guys being here. We will be live again next Monday right here on Super Ch on Super Ch on YouTube, although I think we just got a Super Chat. Hang on. Donald, did I miss yours? I did. Hold on. We're still here. We're going. Uh, Donald, thank you for the Super Chat. Thanks for doing what you do. Super appreciate all the information you and the chat provides. As a well-seasoned cruiser, times three, you have all helped tons. Well, I'm so glad to hear that. Thank you for your generosity, Donald. You've been extremely generous tonight. Thank you for the very, very kind words. I appreciate you. Um, if I didn't get to your question, you can always post your question on our message boards at royalcaribbeanblog.com, or we can try it again next week right here on YouTube. Until then, 
Have a great week, everybody. Stay safe out there. Do something fun. I will talk again very soon right here on, don't worry, I already answered this one, on YouTube. Bye, everybody.